All right, in this video, <clears throat> we're going to take our setup further. The reason I broke it apart into two different videos is because now you have to buy something to go any further. And a shell plate. I have a number 19 shell plate. Uh, they sold out the machines. That they One company, uh, Midwest Shooting Supply, had the breech plates. I went back a day later. They are all sold out except the 19 which is for 10 9 millimeter 38 super and I think I got one for a 30 carbine but I'd like one <coughs> you know for 38 380 and that they're all different now the shell plates like I said you have to buy them and they're about 20 bucks and then with shipping and handling you're looking at a $22 item so that's what you have to buy now the instructions tell you how to install a shell plate. Going to have to change the camera angle because what we're going to do is if you look one, two, three, four, position four where that split bushing is, I'll show you how to remove it and get this, uh, what is it called? Indexing rod. Indexing rod and case ejector have to be removed. So we'll go look at the top. And here, here's the indexing rod here, but I'll change the camera angle so you can see what we're doing. Okay, at the top, like I said, in station four here, you remove the bushing. Then that rod is in a milled out notch. So you remove the indexing rod, and that's it there. Now, we go down into here, I'll have to move the camera again, and then we'll remove the uh, case ejector. Okay, the way this works, I'll put the ejector rod back so you get an understanding. The ejector rod goes through the center of this. It's knurled and it has a hex for an allen. And then the case ejector is this plastic part kind of open end, just be careful when you remove it. And it kind of snaps into a ring on there. Get it off. Okay, you see like there's a groove on this. And this is the part. It just kind of snaps down there. See the split in it? Like I said, that's the part, it kind of has a split in there and you just kind of snap that down into the groove like this with the, the tab down, I'm trying to get it up, there it is, with the tab down. Alright, now the instructions say, take the shell plate, okay, case ejector, raise carriage to mid stroke. So you raise her up about there. You tighten a quarter inch hex hand wrench. Okay, so we got our shell plate. I guess the way it goes is you want the number up because that's where it's kind of chamfered machined out. That's the downside. So that's the side you want is uh, put that ridge up. We're going to put that in there. And we're going to get our quarter inch wrench. And they show you just sticking this down and through there. I go up higher. Like that. Let me see. This up. So I Take the wrench, go through the center hole where that thing goes until it locks in like that to the plate. And I guess you gotta hold the plate and turn the wrench. Come up a little. No. Hold the plate with your finger, hold the wrench, because I guess that's. Oh. Um,
I lined it up and I can feel it indexing. All right, I guess that's it. Okay. So the shell plate is installed. Then you go down all the way to the bottom. Change the camera position again. I'm trying to show this the best I can. Okay, so now we go down. We go down, and it says to reinstall our install indexing rod. So we take the rod, put it in the top, make sure it goes down into the notch. Then you take your breech lock, so even if you're not using the station, I believe you have to have something locked in there to hold that rod in place. Alright, so now we got the plate installed, per instructions. And now you have to install the case injector, which is why it's got a split. Get it in there. And then I guess you just kind of gently pull it out until it locks, and then it kind of falls in place there. I believe. Let's see. I think that's where it goes. Okay, that's about it. Now the next thing, we'll go to the other side, is it tells you to install a primer. And it just shows you that your four positions, like this first one, where this arm is for the case feeder, is your resizing decapping. The second one is your powder charging neck expanding. Your bullet seating is the third position. And this one here, the fourth one, is usually your crimp die. So. Alright, now I'll show you how you drop in a... Uh, primer arm. Okay, and the last step is the priming arm. I'm going to do a small one because it's 9 millimeter. Basically you hold it like that with the large part out, put it in the slot and kind of drop it in like that. There we go. Just drop it in the slot. And if you want, go to the large. Same thing. Alright, so that's about the last of it. Is putting in the primer. Alright. Okay, so now what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to set up a die and we're going to run some stuff through it. Okay, just to test her out, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a carbide sizing die for 9mm. I replaced the normal breech lock uh, device with a split ring. So I'm going to pull her up all the way, full stroke. I'm going to screw down the sizing die. Now when you buy these, like I did in a two-pack, you get two of these things. And you do get the Allen wrench that fits this to lock this in place, which is is neat. Each package has an Allen wrench. Now when you crank that down, that's locked.
And if you wanted to change it out, the idea is you just turn this, remove it, and you can snap in another one. Okay, you're going to try it again. So the idea is you can, once you lock it in, you can remove the dies. The die is set. And you get it back in there. See, not there. we go. And lock it in. Okay. So we got carbide sizing die in there. And part of the reason I would use this machine is I like to size my pistol brass and wash it in a wet tumbler. So I may just set it up like this, just as it is, and run cases through so I can go and wash them. They'll be sized and washed and deprimed. Uh, then you can just remove this and, and just go about running it like a, a progressive reloader. But we'll see. We'll go step by step. Well, let's run some through there and see how it goes. Now, the way this thing works is, and I do have a case feeder coming, is you'd have to go to the upstroke and in this port here, drop the case down. Then when you go and you come up, size the brass. Drop another case in. Uh, here's where we got to weigh this thing down. Upstroke. Drop in another case. Upstroke. Upstroke. That's where the accessory of a case feeder with this comes in handy. Because I believe this one's automatic. It automatically indexes. My Dillon, you had to manually index it. But, oh, see, I missed one. Go up. Pop the case in. So without that accessory, it's kind of a pain in the ass. And this thing is set up. Now, now, see, I keep forgetting. Drop the case in. This will save time, other than doing this on a single stage reload. And then I can get these into the wash. But see, the problem also with this vent is it's not that stable. So what I'd have to do, if you've seen there was a board down on there, I'll take a whole bunch of cast bullets and put it on the batch to uh, give it some stability. So yeah. Get it stable. Or if you mounted this on a, on a good bench, I'll do this fly by night thing. Well, that's how it goes. Like I said, case feeder is coming. I'm going to get that and that will be my next accessory. And then we'll see about priming. Maybe I'll do one where we prime some and uh, see how it goes. Alright, but that's it for the initial setup. And then hopefully if I get the accessories over time, I'll keep making a video, go over one accessory and another. I did get an automatic primer feed, uh, powder measure, case feeder, and even a bullet feeder, which is pretty neat. And maybe in a few days we'll be to the point where I can just run some, I'll use new brass so I ain't got to worry about cleaning it. And we'll run some ammo through this thing in a few days and see how it does.